All right, technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start out by doing some of the similar things we just were doing. We're going to clean off some Petri dishes. Let's see. See what we got to choose from here. Mm -hmm. We'll do. We'll see how much time we got here before things get moving, but we'll do at least three. All right. So I'm not like the greatest artist. Uh, so you'll see my method for cheating here to do fun stuff. What's up, Mr. Anderson? Now you got some time left, brother. I got, uh, I got my agar cooling in the pressure cooker right now. So it'll be a little while before we get to the actual uh, fun part, but... Right now, I'm going to draw some designs on these plates and uh, do a couple cool little cutouts. What I learned from the last experiment was that you don't actually need to do, like, all the fancy cutouts that I thought you did. Like, you know, I, I cut out, like, kind of a trench for that, uh, uh, for the for the mushroom uh, plate and whatnot. But you actually don't have to to remove a trench. You can just take your scalpel and cut a line. And then what happens is the mycelium hits that line and dives down into it. And just by its nature, because it's more concentrated there, it appears to you when you look at the plate as if there's a solid white line there. So uh, it'll expedite the process for making these fancy designs that I've been doing. Because before I would actually... Uh, you know, like draw the design and cut out a, a a trench where they where I thought it would need to have nutritional agar or something in there, a different colored agar uh, to make it special. But that's that's just more something for the art side of it rather than uh, the mycelium growing in an artistic style. Um, so this way, I just put little cuts in my plate. And, of course, I did put my scalpel and torch away because I was being a good boy and cleaning up my work area. So, we'll be a good boy again and sanitize up. Okay, so step one find a design that you want. I will be using my phone and you will see why in a moment. Now what should we do? What up, E. Hendrix? I don't know what I want to do now. I guess I should have thought about that. Anyhow, we're just going to go on to Google, and we're going to go ahead, and we're going to look up. I don't know. Let's look up a smiley face. That was a popular one before, but let's try and do a different one. What do you think? Creepy smiley face? Let's try that. I don't know why it came up creepy pasta smiley face. Is that a thing? I mean, I guess they're all just smiley faces at the end of the day. There you go. How about how about that? 
All right. So I actually jumped the gun by unwrapping my plates. And you'll find out why here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with this dirty plate. And what I want to do is I'm going to take my phone here with my design on it. I'm going to take my plate here. And yes, I'm going to put it over the phone. And I'm going to draw the design. I know. Super duper artistic and super duper complicated, right? All right, that's what we got there. That's what we got there. And then what we'll do is we'll clean this plate off. We'll set it there. We'll look from the top. And we'll just cut that design out with our scalpel. Easy peasy. Who's got some other ideas? Anybody got other ideas? What do we want to what do we want to uh, design here? Now the key thing here when you when you sanitizing your plate now is that this this is wet, so you you do have to be kind of careful. It will kind of mess up, so you got to kind of have an imagination there. Or like me, I will go back now that it's mostly sanitary, and I'll take my Sharpie. All right, now, you guys are going to have to give me some ideas here. I'm just going to free free uh, ball it here and, and start designing stuff, and I'm not doing dicks, so. <laughs> I don't know. Let's try a mushroom landscape, huh? Do it in a way you can kind of see. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Like those old uh, tash tattoo things we'd get out of the uh, machines. I can't freehand a skull, so I'll pull up an image of one and see if I can't do that. We got we got some mushrooms going there, sort of. I guess it'd help if I took it out of the glare. All right. So, how do I want to do this? I'm going to do it back asswards because I only have a couple of these. PDA plates and only one of them that's clear here. But I want it to be clean. So pull it out and we will look up a skull tattoo. I like that.
Maybe I'll try simple. Simple skull tattoo. How about that? I don't know. I suppose I could try and replicate that. All right. So we will see. That one may be a little difficult. I know the silence is building anticipation, huh? Well, that might work. Not the most perfect skull, but who knows? Maybe it will look pretty cool when we finish our job here. Doom, 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 doom. Now we'll let that dry here a moment. Try not to ruin it too much. Kind of did. I have to touch that up a little bit. I need a uh, sterile phone. <laughs> now, the idea really is to do this stuff in advance. Do it when the plates are, you know, uh, sanitary. Let that let that stuff dry and then, then sanitize it. The uh, permanent marker doesn't come off as easy when it's dry. You can You can hit it just a little bit harder and not erase all your lines. Mostly. Okay, so let's think about this one. I'll just try to do something semi-artistic 
I will, instead of trace it, I will attempt to copy something from picture. Uh, yeah, I guess I could do that. Been a while. That'll bring back some memories. You guys, you guys may recognize this one, or you could be uh, too young for it. Most of us don't even know what it came from. In fact, somebody even asked me the other day, "Why do I know how to do this? What did it come from?" Whatever are we doing? Yes, the S. However, did we ever figure that one out? That is the Stussy S from back in the day. If you were a skater, I was not. But I still drew it. Everybody drew it. But at least I knew what it was. All right. So last one. What do we want here? We got our smiley face. I can't draw daggers for shit. I guess we could just try doing a good old-fashioned peace sign, huh? Ah! Not that I can draw a straight line for shit. <laughs> oh, well, we'll correct it. With the scalpel. Does that look right? No, that looks pretty lame. Let's try. Right there. Squiggly those. We don't want those ones. Don't mind the black mark. I will correct it with the scalpel. <laughs> Hopefully. Either that or I'll hit the wrong line and it'll look equally as goofy when I'm done. Okay, so I will add that this is just one way to do these. Like, this is just for the mycelial growth pattern. I'm not uh, really going for, like, the super-duper artistic-y uh, cavities right here. We will do that in the next, next little phase here when the uh, sterilizer cools off. And what we'll do there is I actually have a bunch of little cookie cutters, and we're going to pull some designs out with those random shaped cookie cutters and then fill those cavities with the fancy colored agar that I made up this morning. So I guess we'll start with the one that needs correcting.
Okay. Well, it's going to be hard to probably see my cuts there, but all I really did was I just ran my scalpel. I actually didn't follow the outside line. I made my own line. <laughs> uh, but you can you can just trace the line. And so what will happen now is I'll close this plate up, and I will then put a transfer on here later on. And what will happen is that my psyllium will grow, grow across those lines, and those lines that I've cut will show through as being white like a design, like a, like I had actually cut something out. But for now, I'll just go in and I will, I will use the uh, ISO to wipe this off the back. And really, you won't see anything. You know, you won't see much there until I put the mycelium on there and it grows out. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, do that here later on and I'll have those pictures uh, uh, showing up on the uh, different social medias as we go along. But we'll get the rest of these cut while we're waiting for our uh, our agar to cool. I have to actually turn around here and check that while we watch that scalpel cool. Looks like we got about five more minutes there. Uh, this one will be a little more difficult. I do have little uh, lights that I can use up here if you really need something to look through to trace it, but uh, these are pretty clear plates, so pretty easy to see through. Well, we're getting there. We got the outline drawn there.
Hmm, I think we got it, maybe. Hard to see, but it kind of gives it some three-dimensional qualities now that I've put some cuts there. Just need to put in the teeth, it looks like. That's the only thing I forgot. Really can't wait to see what these look like with my psyllium growing out on them. Yeah, I think we got it all. All right. Next up is our fancy pantsy freakadeek. Smiley face. Kind of think in this case, maybe I will do the fill in the void. I kind of like this one. So we'll we'll do this one a little more intensely. I might move the camera too so you can see a little better.
I'm not sure if I know Mr. Yuck. Oh, yeah, didn't we have this conversation before you showed me? And you told me, and I was like, yeah, I should do that. And now I've totally forgot that. That's what dabs will do to you, brother. Oh, that's a big chuck. Well, that one was much tougher than I thought it would be. We'll see how it turns out. Luckily, it's not something that's like got super defined lines anyway, and we'll probably just look creepier by doing it. So, last one is the mushroom scene. It'll be easy peasy.
Okay. So that was fun. Those are all set and ready to go for later. We'll go ahead and we'll wrap them up, except for the last little skull guy we did there. This one, we'll pour into that one. These other uh, four here, we will go ahead and throw some transfers on there here a little later. I'm, I got to get ready to pour these other guys, pull them out. Who knows, maybe we'll do those transfers after all. So we will have time while that stuff cools, so we'll see. I'm going to pull that stuff out, move the camera. You can watch me hopefully not break my back doing it.
Oh, these are those fancy pantsy cookie cutters I'm talking about. Metal. So you can torch them and reuse them. So let's get some plates to play with. Eh? So we'll get ready here for our uh, fancy cutouts. We'll cut out a bunch of these cookie cutter shapes and get them ready to fill with that cool uh, multicolor stuff I got in the background there. We got some neon green and we got some bright uh, orangish red. They call it like firebird red, but looks to me more like uh, orange. But Maybe I'm partially colorblind, couldn't say. All right. Got our good old Playboy bunny. It's always a good place to start. Now, this was sterilized in the uh, pressure canner there. I should have sterilized my scalpel before getting in here, but we'll nuke it now with the dab torch here. I've found that it's kind of difficult to get these little deals out of here, so it helps if when it's in here, if you can... When you got the deal on it, you can kind of pry it free like that. Doesn't help that my scalpel was all hot there and kind of melted some of that stuff. But especially like this, when you've got uh, soft agar like I did, it makes it easier to get out the cavity here. At least that's that was the idea. I don't know that that's the result the result looks more like a cluster fuck honestly Yeah, not terrible. And that was the easy one. <laughs>
Okay, so let's kind of do a little bit more of an intricate design with this one. We'll try and use several of the smaller ones, perhaps. It's kind of cool looking. Okay, so this ought to be pretty fun. There's a lot of cutouts, and this is not the uh, most solid agar. Oh, look, and then it comes out in one piece for me just to show me. You can be both wrong and right.
Not quite sure what to call that. We'll see what it looks like at the end of the day. Yeah, I should use that uh, white rabbit on the on the uh, bunny rabbit plate.
getting some hard action in there. Yeah, yeah. I need to talk more though. Definitely, I need a mic that I can uh, have going that was like a spit guard to keep from heading in here. Appreciate you watching, lazy. <laughs> now we're definitely getting tricky here because these interlocking rings of stuff are going to want to move on me as I try and pull out this ring here.
Well, we'll see how that turns out. Let's check our thermometer. Still got a ways to go, so I'll probably pull down a couple more plates and we'll see what else we can do here. All right, so in this case, I'm going to take this uh, little design here, and I'm just kind of going to use it as a guide for myself, and hopefully I can cut near to uh, the shape of it to make a larger uh, version of it above my little mushroom cutout here. We'll see how well that this comes out. It's really hard to say. Like my little agar graveyard I got going down there.
Now, if only I could draw a Sasquatch. And we have our little sunshine there in the corner. Just being a peaceful sunshine. Can I be the anti-Bob Ross since I have no hair? I mean, seems kind of fitting. All right, well, we'll see how that turns out. Kind of cool. Who knows? Got time for one more before we need to start pulling out plates or the rest of these radioactives out. And yes, that's what I call them all. Mm. All right, what do we want to do here? <laughs> yeah, I'm making my uh, fancy designs here. I don't know what I'm making on this one. I'm just drawing random stuff. I'm not artistic, so 
this is just my idea of random art here. Getting ready for the final round. Syringe and fancy chamber thingies. That and cleaning up my mess. Would you like a jello snack? Interesting story. They do, in fact, use agar for food. That is, in fact, what it is primarily used for. We just kind of steal it and use it for our purposes. That's the way you can usually find it in your local Asian market. They use it for a number of things, but as a... Uh, Gelatin replacement is the primary one. Agar gummies. Yeah. I never did make them. I, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of like everything else where, uh, uh, you know, you... You, you have a flavor that you're used to, and we're used to gelatin being what is the base of our gummies or sometimes, uh, you know, some of our other things, but not the, uh, not the agar. It's, you know, it's got its own unique flavor. It's more tuned to uh, sushimi and things like that, I believe. But, you know, what do I know? I, I just know about uh, pouring agar. I don't know about the rest of it. So we'll get some extra Petries out here. Tastes like mycology. Yeah, that can be good. That can be bad. I guess it depends on what you're wanting to do that day. <laughs> I have not gone back out to look for morels. Uh, you know, I I need to go because I think they're out there. I think uh, they're down on the river bottoms. I see uh, Mushroom Marauder and who's the other guy that's close to me? Mushroom Wonderland. Uh, both of them are near me and they're, they're picking them and showing pictures of several different varieties. So the morels are definitely out there. The burn morels have been up for a few weeks now here in Oregon. So definitely if you're uh, local uh, get to get to finding them because they're out i just i haven't found any myself i'm not so lucky anymore 
Oops, let me just punch the mic here. Agar and waffles, huh? I don't know. I think it looks good. It would look like flavored uh, syrup. I don't know if it would taste like flavored syrup. I suppose I could try. I got some uh, yeah, some of that Loran flavored oil. Make some make some uh, agar syrup. I guess. I mean, I don't know why it wouldn't work. It may fall out of solution, but maybe not. Maybe you just cook it in like you do the others. I'll tell you what I have used agar for. I use it to uh, gel my uh, gravy as I'm gluten intolerant, as you would say, but actually I'm allergic to wheat. So I will actually use agar to thicken my gravy. It works quite well. It's uh, It doesn't take very much. You know, you just get a little bit of fat in your pan, just like you're doing anything else, and it turns out pretty good. Okay, so I got some of these cool little containers here. These are not really mine to be given away. This isn't my idea. These are actually epoxy art containers. A buddy of mine uh, on Instagram, Soup of the Ripper, he uh, recommended them to me. He did some really cool artsy stuff. So I'm going to try these out today. Anyway, the idea is you put a different color in each one of these, and then you pour it. And so you can pour multiple colors simultaneously. So we'll see how that goes. We also have our handy dandy syringe here that we'll be using. In fact, I should go find some needle tips. I think we probably still got a few minutes before we're ready. But why don't we take a look and see? Yeah, we're at 140. So we still got a couple minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that as well as set up my mixer. So I'll be back one minute. All right, so now we got all our tools handy here. So like these ones, the ones that we're going to be using the syringes to fill, we can actually do when it's hot. It doesn't hurt to do because we're going to transfer it and it's going to cool in that process anyway. And we want to try and keep these things going warm while we're working. That's why we got it on this little heater pad. If you can't see it, this orange thing in the back. And then this is a heated stir plate to keep them going if I really need to. Let's see. Let's do this first. Now all those little containers in this syringe actually went through the... Uh, autoclave so it's been sterilized mm 
So we'll pour a little in our cap here. Kind of overfilled that first one. Okay, so let's move on, keep this heart looking fancy, and see I keep my syringe here pretty sterile or mostly out of the flow. I'm not touching it with my fingertips. Hmm. All right, so we got some pretty cool looks going on here. I'll see if I can't uh, turn it here so you can see a little better.
can kind of see her there. Okay, so let's try this double chamber majigger. Well, I guess it requires a bit more timing than I actually have. Let's try it in an open plate. And we'll get our palette out here and see what we can do, our color palette.
Okay, so I'll take a short break here and kind of try and show you what I've been doing on these. It's kind of tough. I need another camera here, obviously, to show you a top view. Okay, so fortunately, we're uh, done with that. And I say fortunately because the stuff in my caps has congealed and would not be reusable. So then I just got to kind of set it aside here. Hope I don't spill it later and hope it's not too big of a pain in the ass to clean up. In fact, let's dump it out. Okay, so now let's get into some regular radioactive with these fancy little cups we got here and without. So we'll lay down a base color. I don't know. We'll wait. We'll wait. We'll get our cup ready here first. So we'll add clear first. Going for about two thirds full here, just so we can top it off with the color. Thank 
Okay, so I learned a good lesson there. The chamber in the center needs to be filled much less.